Hello, this is Yi. Um, about a month ago, I did this Super Mario engraving on a piece of copper as a proof of concept that you can indeed create some gradient using the fiber laser that the Laser Picker 4 offers. Um, and then today, Michael just took this to the whole new level. Um, you can read his post about how he did this. So basically, the key to the success um, is basically two parts. The first part is you have to slice your original image, which looks like this, into different layers by color. Uh, the second key to success is different settings to different layers. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to slice a given image into different layers by color. Um, the tool I'm using is called Inkscape. You can download this for free from inkscape.org. Um, it's open source application and it's cross-platform. That means whether you use Linux, Windows, or Mac OS, there's a version for you. Okay, let's make a start. You launch Inkscape, and this is the default view you'll be seeing. You drag and drop your source image into this blank document. It's okay if it's too big. Uh, we can just drag and scale this down to something manageable. Okay. The way we convert a bitmap image into a multi-layer vector image is by going to Path menu, Trace Bitmap. By default, you are on this first tab. You go to the second tab for multicolor, change detection mode to colors, select to remove background. Let's see what happens. Click Apply. OK, now the generated vector image is on top of the bitmap image. If we just drag this top layer across, you will see the difference. This is the original image. This is the generated one. Now, if we right click, ungroup, that will basically ungroup all the layers for different colors. So we, for example, for the hat, we have a red layer plus a sleeve. Um, for the blue eyes, if I can manage to select that. Nope, that's fine. This is black outline. And for the face, we have another layer. We have a yellow button here and a blue layer for dungaree. Note that this dungaree layer looks really big compared to everything else. For example, here, this rectangle frame closely wrapping around these block colors. But for this blue layer, this area seems too big. Now let's have a look why. If we just zoom in, you will see lots of these tiny bits. Um, these are not good. These will interfere with other layers when you do the engraving. So in my first attempt, you see these fuzzy lines. All of these were because these tiny bits of color dots. Now, the way to remove these dots, um, we have the manual way and the more automatic way. The manual way is you go to this editing mode, select and delete these unwanted color bits. Um, this can be time consuming. Right, the better way to do it is to tweak the setting when we convert our bitmap image into a vector image. Let me go back. Remove this. Right, let's start over. So the setting to tweak is this speckles. If you hover your mouse over, you'll see ignore small spots in the bitmap. This is exactly what we want. By default, this is two. This is very, very low. We just want to bump up this value. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, just it's a trial and error process. Um, so let's do this again. Apply. Drag our new layer over. Ungroup. Let's check the blue dungaree. That's perfect. And just double check. We have a face layer. We have red, black layer like this. Okay, so 
we have a color per layer now. Next step would be exporting this image into multiple images. Um, note that if you just export different layers as they are, once you import these images or these layers into your laser printer app, they'll be placed right in the middle of your screen. Um, so it's going to be a pain to use your finger to drag and drop these layers for the alignment. Uh, let me quickly show you what I mean. I'm going to duplicate this. So imagine we have the laser packer app um, screen down here. When you import each layer, by default, each layer will be placed right in the middle of your working area. So eventually, as you load this image layer by layer, you will get something like this. And just imagine how hard it's going to be to use your finger to drag and drop a multi-layer image and place everything precisely where they should be. Okay, <clears throat> so my trick to solve this problem is to create a background or canvas, if you will. So you draw a rectangle. Uh, it should be a frame with no infill. So if there is any infill, in case yours look like this, maybe in a different color, you go to this fill tab, remove the infill, go to stroke paint, make sure the stroke is white. So once this frame is loaded into a laser packer app, because it's white, it's not going to be engraved. So this frame is not going to interfere with your final engraving. Um, then let's resize this frame to be something as close to the size of the image as possible. Like so. Okay, now just in case this frame is covering this black glove a tiny bit, let's put this layer to the bottom. Okay, done. Now it's time to export each layer. Um, I'll just do one layer as an example. Here is the blue dungaree. I select this one and I hold down my shift key to select this frame as well. Go to file, export. Make sure you check export selected only. There we go. Um, this entire area would be the size of this frame plus the blue bits in the middle. If I don't have this frame, <coughs> The exported image will look like this. So let me select that. Uh, here, make sure you enter a large number for the width and height in pixels. Um, by large number, normally mm, maybe 3000 to 4000 is sufficient. Um, note that the DPI will be calculated automatically. DPI really doesn't matter. It will be overwritten by the setting inside your laser packer app. It doesn't mean anything. What matters is width and height in pixels. Now let's export this layer. Okay. Um, you can hold your shift key to deselect it and pick your next layer. The preview looks like this. Maintain the size and just do another export, maybe give it a different name. So here, let me show you the outcome. Um, I just ignored the blue eye for now. So I have five layers to be engraved. What I'll do now is I will send these five images to my phone and let's move to the phone. Here I have loaded all five layers into the new laser packer app. Uh, note that they're not aligned, which is fine. Uh, what we can do here is we drag and select all of them. Go to align. Um, do something like align center. And there we go. It's perfectly aligned. 
because they all share the same sized background frame. Um, the face, which is interesting, you see the little preview here um, on the layer called Bitmap 5. Because the color of the face is quite light, it's below the threshold to be converted into black for engraving. So what we're doing here is we only select this face layer, click on B and W, and increase this threshold value so that it's considered as black. There we go. The tiny preview icon has changed. And if we click back, you see the face has become black. It doesn't mean it will be black after engraving. It just means those pixels will be engraved by the engraver. The color or the gradient is up to your setting. Um, then in the carving layer here, you can set different settings per layer. Now, if you want to resize this image, um, let's resize them all together as a whole. So select everything. You can either drag and drop to make this into your desired size. Uh, you use two finger to zoom in and out. Or if you want something more precise, you can enter the width or height. For example, let's go for 50. That's it. When you do the actual engraving, if you know precisely what setting you're going for per layer, then you can just preset your settings per layer and do the whole job in one go. But most of the times, you have to do a bit of trial and error. So what you would do is, you only select a single layer at a time. In this case, this is the face. You go to Carving Layer tab, change the setting for this particular layer, engrave that until the outcome looks good. Then you go to normal layer view, select the next layer to do this repeatedly for each layer.